All right, good evening. Happy Monday. I hope this finds you all doing well. Looking forward to looking into the Word of God with you as we continue our study in the book of Mark, chapter 4. Our topic for tonight, we're going to focus on the hard soil. So um, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll see what the Word of God has to say. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and again, the privilege of being able to come together and to be able to look into your word as a family, Lord, as we examine these truths, Lord, we just pray, God, that you would give us wisdom, Lord, that you would help us to see uh, and understand your word, God, and, and, and most of all, Lord, that we would um, take to heart uh, the seriousness of this matter and, and see the, the dangers that are there and the need for us to be on guard. So, so give us wisdom, God, and we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as I look in at Mark chapter 4, we're going to be focusing on a few verses. We're going to look at verses 3 through 4, and then I'm going to read 14 through 15, and, and then we'll see what other scriptures tie into this. So Jesus speaking, he's um, sharing the parable, and this was the one about the sower and the seeds. And he says, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Skip on down to verses 14 through 15, as Jesus is now later explaining uh, the meaning of his message. And so again, I was focusing on the footpath uh, or the hard soil. The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. So when we when we hear this, we may quickly think about the lost, and while that is definitely applicable, Randall referenced that yesterday in his message, um, but it's not just, this doesn't just pertain to people who have been given opportunity to hear, and, and Satan obviously, yes, works to swoop in and to keep those uh, from coming to Christ. Um, but for those of us who are in Christ, you know, what, what is there to gain from this? Well, I think it's very important that we examine these truths in light of other truths that we know and see that we ourselves are at risk of missing what it is that God has for us. And we've talked about this quite in depth over the uh, last several months as we've examined other scriptures. And they all have kind of pointed this way, the risk, the seriousness, the need for us as God's people to guard our hearts. And so as we look at this specifically, I first want us to understand um, the heart condition. So let's just talk about that. So I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 through 10, and it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Now, we, I think a lot, especially in the church, are familiar with this verse. Uh, we, we often hear it stated among us, you know, kind of, I don't want to say defending our actions or attitudes, but, um, you know, we like to reference the deceitfulness of the heart of man. But there's something very important that I want us to be mindful of. First, again, let's, we're looking to the church. We're, we're viewing this uh, in light of Christians. So Romans chapter 10, verse 10 says, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So remember, there has to be some form of softening in order for the Lord's word to break through in order to allow for salvation. And it, but there's something really miraculous that occurs. There's a beautiful transformation once we do believe, once we have believed in our heart and confessed uh, with our mouth that transformative work that takes place. Listen to this truth in Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 17 through 21. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And when they come there, 
They will remove from it all its detestable things and all of its abominations. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put in them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh so that they may walk in my statues and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts go after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own heads, declares the Lord God. Well, who's he speaking to or in reference to? Obviously, he's talking about his people. And they had already gone astray, right? They had already turned their backs on the things of God. And the Lord is saying, look, I'm going to bring them back when, you know, when they repent, when they turn back to me, I'm not only going to bring them into the land, which I promised, but I'm going to give them this new heart. Uh, and, and so this is a transformative work that he didn't just promise to his people back then, but this is a work that continues to this day, that when we do believe in our hearts, right, when we confess with our mouths, God does a transformative work, a heart transplant takes place. And, and you see it. That's what makes new believers so easily identifiable. Why? Because you see they're passionate about the things of God. They're in love with the Lord and they're in love with his word. And you see this evident change. And that's what is very concerning to me and any other believer when someone confesses, right? They they go through the motions. Randall talked about it yesterday. They they you come forward, they get baptized, but there's just no change. Um, it doesn't look like a transplant has taken place. And so it's very important that we know that God does a transformative work in the hearts of those who come to him. So now he says, I uh, take away that hard heart and I give you a soft heart. Now let's talk about that or a heart of flesh because just because we as God's people have been given this heart of flesh, we are still susceptible to the hardening of our hearts. And so um, that's why I want us to, again, when we consider this this seed that falls on a hard path or a walkway or road, you know, however Randall talked about the cow path, right? Where, you know, they just pack that earth because they're continually trampling um, back and forth. And so um, the seed isn't able to sink in. And as believers, we see throughout scripture, I'm going to share two particular, but there's multiple places where you can reference God warning his people uh, to guard their hearts. And it, we see it in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Why would the word tell us this? Well, first of all, I mean, you see the seriousness with all vigilance. What is that saying? I mean, like literally, this is crucial. You need to stay on top of it. You need to be mindful in everything. Protect your heart. And, and again, out of it flows the springs of life. This is how God works. It, it, it's through our hearts. And if we're not careful, if we don't guard it, what we'll find is slowly but surely it becomes harder and harder. Randall referenced, I don't think it was this week. Um, it may have been the week before, but I know um, he referenced a, a song that I love to reference and it's Casting Crowns. It's a slow fade. And that's, the, that's just how insidious the enemy is, is when we start to tolerate little sin in our life, right? Little things that we that are acceptable um, amongst the majority of people, right? Uh, we just start to tolerate sin. And the more we tolerate these sins in our lives, the more comfortable. And with each sin that we allow, which each sin we accommodate, our heart becomes harder and harder. And so what once I deemed as unacceptable today, mm, it's okay. At least, you know, one time won't hurt. You know, we start to make excuses and justify sin. Before you know it, we're defending sin. So look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. He's talking to the church He's talking to the believers. He's talking to the Christians and he's saying, watch out, be mindful. You say, well, how can a Christian have an unbelieving heart? Well, anybody who's walked with the Lord for any amount of time can say, well, it's easy, 
right? Because we can go astray, and before we know it, in our going astray, we become unbelievers, right? We, we begin to doubt. We begin to, that's how I can justify the sin in my life, because I'm doubting the truth. Yeah. And so, so uh, it, it's deception by the enemy, and he works really hard to do this. He wants nothing more than to, for me to tolerate and accept sin, because the more I do that, the more I'm leading the world away from the Lord. It says, for we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As I said, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. How do we do that? In rebellion. How often do we hear the word of God or ignore the word of God? That's rebellious. That's rebellion. It's a spirit that resists, right? I, I literally, I have found myself before. I don't want to read the word because if I read the word, it's going to convict me, <laughs> right? And so, um, so we can easily find ourselves into that. And and it, and again, through we're, throughout Scripture, we're told, "Watch out! Be on guard! Protect yourself!" Um, listen to this: Romans one eighteen through thirty two. We read that God gave those who knew better over to the lusts, to their lusts, the impurity of the, their hearts, to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Because why? Because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the created rather than the creator who is blessed forever. You hear what happens? It's, it's the free will of man. God will let you choose, but in your choosing, your heart is becoming harder and harder and harder. It's a dangerous place to be. I have literally seen people who were on fire for the Lord, love the Lord, passionate about Him and His Word, and and they absolutely went astray. And I, and in my mind, I'm like, how does that happen? Well, it's easy. It, it's it's the power of the enemy to deceive, and it starts just with little exceptions, little little acceptance, small things, things that, again, that uh, we easily justify in our minds. But there is no justification for the believer. Why? Because he's given us a new heart. Wait, why? It, go back to that scripture. When he gave that new heart, what did it say? Let's look back in, in Ezekiel. Because when he said he was given the new heart, listen, in doing this, so that they may walk in my statues and keep my rules and obey them. He gave us what we needed in order to lead the life that he's called us to lead. You're without excuse, Christian. You're without excuse. Is your heart so hard that you have um, denied the power of God? I hear it. that It's it's very disturbing. You hear Christians say, well, I can't help it, or I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You know, you use all these excuses as to why you sin, and it's unacceptable, and it will not stand before the Lord. Mark chapter 8, verses 14 through 21. Read it for yourself. Jesus challenges his disciples on the hardness of their heart. <laughs> He's like, you know, what is, what's wrong with you? Is your heart that hard? I mean, it was all a result of their lack of faith. Um, just understand, listen, it's a choice. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. Who is he talking to? The church. In the futility of their minds, they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. What's he saying? Don't do it. You can do it, church. You can go that way, but don't do it anymore. You must choose not to. They have become calloused and given themselves up to sensuality, greed, the practice of every kind of impurity. But that is not what you have learned from Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and that you were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life. And it is corrupt through deceitful desires. And you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self-created after 
uh, or excuse me, put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. What do we know, church? Well, first of all, I can say, he says, assuming you've been taught. Well, I can tell you, Eastside Baptist Church, you've been taught. If you've not been taught, that's your fault because we are teaching, 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 teaching. I don't know anybody who teaches as much as we do. The Word of God. You are, have every opportunity to be exposed. Um, if you don't have a physical copy of the Word, we are always giving them out. We're more than willing to place one in your hand. Uh, you will be counseled. You will be coached. Again, you're without excuse. You've been taught. Therefore, it is up to you, church, to decide to no longer do this. It goes on, and I'll let you read it for yourself, but he talks about the ways of man outside of God, that hard heart has no place in the life of a believer. God has changed you and you must decide to live in the newness of life, which he has given you, which is a heart made of flesh. Live in the flesh, not the flesh. <laughs> I got to watch what I'm saying. <laughs> live in the flesh heart <laughs> that God has given you and see what God will do. Don't let your heart be one that cannot absorb the seeds of the Word of God. And then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your Word, God. It is so good and so rich and, and so crucial for life. God, we can't make it without you. And yet, we try to. Most of us, most days, we try to to get by and we're miserable it shows up it's in our life it's evident lord in the way we treat others it's evident god in the way we conduct business it's evident father in in how miserable we are and god we can't blame anyone but ourselves because you've given us every opportunity god you've given us um again great teachers you've given us uh your word you've given us your spirit you've given us a new heart lord we're without excuse so god help us to wake up Help us to see uh, the danger of these excuses and help us, Lord, to be willing to, to allow your word to seep in and to do the transformative work that it was designed to do so that we maybe bring glory to you, God. The world needs to see people, people living in the newness of life. So help us, God, to, to be those people and to bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, love you guys. Good night. I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, Buddy's here, but he's laying in his bed, so good night. Talk to you later. Bye.